Amy Adams. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I rise to take a call on this third reading debate on the uh, Westpac New Zealand Bill. And I believe I've spoken in every uh, debate uh, on the bill as it's passed through the House, so I've really said a lot of what I wanted to cover, and so I don't propose making a long contribution, sir. I did just want to, though, take the opportunity uh, at the beginning of this third reading debate to uh, acknowledge uh, the previous sponsor of this bill and the previous chair of the Finance and Expenditure Committee, Craig Foss. I haven't had a chance in the House yet to, uh, to congratulate Mr Foss on uh, his promotion to Minister, and I just wanted to make a comment, sir, as we complete the passage of this bill that Mr Foss has has sponsored and shepherd through the House uh, that he, I think he's done an outstanding job uh, in his previous ro roles in this, in this Parliament and I have every confidence that he will make an equally outstanding contribution uh, in his new role as Minister and in fact I should refer to him as the Honourable Craig Foster. Right. It takes a while to get used to that. Uh, Mr Speaker, the, the, this bill, the Westpac New Zealand Bill, uh, oddly enough, given its name, is, is, is not really about Westpac in, in the most uh, sort of holistic sense. What the bill is really about, and I think both previous speakers have certainly touched on this, is it's about the need to ensure that New Zealand has a strong, stable banking environment. And certainly the last few years have shown us the importance of that, and as the previous speaker has said, I think we can all be very grateful, actually, for the way our banking sector has responded in these very challenging times. And while they've responded extremely well through the, uh, the global economic crisis and have to date responded very well through, through Canterbury's own crises, uh, I just add my uh, plea, I guess, to those big four banks or, and all the banks in New Zealand that they continue su to support uh, Cantabrians as we carry on through our own uh, regional crisis. Uh, so, the bill in this sense is driven actually by the Reserve Bank's local incorporation policy, which is really about ensuring that the systemically important banks, the banks that are so big uh, that we need them to be strong and stable, uh, are controlled and incorporated locally so that if there was ever to be any sort of banking crisis, the Reserve Bank is able to uh, wrap around those banking uh, organisations and ensure that they are uh, protected for the good of all New Zealanders and uh, continue to provide the service to New Zealand that we expect of them. And a part of that local incorporation policy is really saying, look, there is this liabilities cap of $15 billion. Uh, If you are going to exceed that, you need to be based uh, and owned locally uh, by a locally incorporated company. The situation with Westpac, as Mr Cunliffe has commented, is that it's one of the four banks that currently have a dual uh, banking registration, and they have operated to date as a combination, and then they will continue to operate as a combination of a branch uh, of Westpac Banking Corporation, which is Australian, uh, and of course Westpac New Zealand, which is a locally incorporated body. Westpac New Zealand, uh, actually in 2006, in a bill very similar to the one we now have before us, had uh, the domestic uh, and uh, sorry, the consumer and retail, retail and business banking transferred over to Westpac New Zealand. So really this uh, mirrors that process and adds uh, the institutional banking and, and financial markets operations into that locally incorporated uh, pool. The important thing to get on record, and I've said this in previous debates, but it's worth repeating, is that this bill in no way affects anyone who might be listening or reading these debates who banks with Westpac in New Zealand. Uh, it is entirely limited to the, to the institutional banks, and even for those organisations, sir, the benefit of passing it uh, through this House uh, is that it can be a seamless transition that really does not affect customers in any way. So I just want to reiterate uh, to, to all Westpac customers that it, it is a, uh, has no effect on them, except in the wider sense, which is that all New Zealand uh, consumers and banking customers uh, and residents of New Zealand can have confidence that because of bills and bills like this, we will continue to have a strong and stable banking environment that the Reserve Bank can step up to, can wrap around uh, and, and can have good prudential oversight of uh, in years to come. Sir, the bill, as I said, mirrors what happened in 2006. It's a necessary step forward to ensure that Westpac continues to operate within the liabilities cap of the local incorporation policy. Uh, it is a necessary bill. It is the best way to achieve the objectives that the Reserve Bank require of Westpac, and I commend it to the House. The Honourable David Parker. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, at times like this, listeners will get an appreciation that there's a lot that we do in this Parliament that we actually agree on. Um, I, I, I don't quite agree with the, the way in which it was expressed by the prior speaker saying that uh, this is of no effect to depositors. Actually, it, it, is in a, it does have effect for depositors, the depositive. The background to this is that under the last government, the Reserve Bank uh, came to the government and said, look, we're concerned that 
the dependence of New Zealand on uh, overseas-based banking institutions uh, could, not, could be detrimental to the interests of New Zealand depositors in an, if we came to a tight squeeze um, because there were less instruments that the uh, Reserve Bank could use to control the ranking of uh, in unsecured depositors uh, if there was a big clean-out in the banking system. And so the Reserve Bank wanted to make sure that the interests of New Zealanders could be uh, secured against the interests of uh, against uh, the, the assets of uh, New Zealand domiciled branches of banks rather than banks being run as a, as a branch of an Australian entity. And as a consequence, the uh, government, the last government uh, and the Reserve Bank and now the current government and the uh, Reserve Bank have uh, taken steps to ensure that large New Zealand-based banking operations actually have a New Zealand-based branch that has New Zealand-based assets, which uh, could, would be available to depositors in the event of a failure of the bank, uh, so that uh, there would not be a contest as between New Zealand-based depositors and Australian-based depositors to what would both be effectively Australian-based assets even if those, some of those assets were physically um, based in New Zealand. So that's the underlying reason why we have this change. And as a consequence of this change, we will have uh, improvement in the banking system for New Zealand. Um, Mr Speaker, I, the, the other point that I would like to develop was one raised by my colleague, uh, the Honourable David Cunliffe, on uh, the... the uh, position that the national government is taking with regard to savings and the economy. They're, they're effectively saying, I think uh, the phrase that Mr Cunliffe used was steady as she goes. He wasn't referring to the track by the raconteurs, I don't think. Uh, he was referring to the economic vision that the national party has for the country, which is really, uh, you don't have to change much, um, but in their view, New Zealand's lot will improve. Uh, despite the, the settings of the New Zealand economy being largely unchanged. And I want to challenge that view, and I think this bill is an illustration of why that view ought to be challenged. Australia owns not just its own banks, but ours. <laughs> and that points to a fundamental problem that we have in savings in New Zealand. We don't save enough and we spend too much. Beg your pardon? Nothing to do with savings, uh, says uh, the member for Hamilton from National. Well, of course, it's got, every, it's got everything to do with savings. If New Zealand doesn't save enough as, and, uh, doesn't save enough as a country, then uh, we get poorer year by year because we actually have a current account deficit and we, we import more and more money into the country via banks like the Westpac Bank. And an expression of how poor we are as a country is the fact that we have don't have enough money in New Zealand to own our own banks. They've become Australian-owned. Uh, uh, this is rubbish we hear. But again, you know, the, the, what, you know, the, the, the national government don't get it. You know, they came to, to, the, to the parliament a little while ago, about a year ago, and they said the big difference between New Zealand and Australia is mining. They, that's how they were, going to, they were going to catch up with Australia through mining. When we've actually all known on this side of the House, that, the, that a fundamental problem with the New Zealand economy is that we spend too much and we don't save enough. And that's why we don't own enough of our own country. Now, now we had say it's rubbish. We got that again from the National Party. Well, he's just completely wrong. It's absolute, and, and actually, that, that lack of understanding from a man, from, from, from the member from Hamilton is sort of is, is underlined by the, outcome, the projections in, the, in, the, in this year's budget. The, the government hasn't fixed New Zealand's structural economic problems, as evidenced by the fact that the current account deficit grows in the four years in the budget projection to 6.9% of GDP. So when they get back eventually to some economic growth after the prolonged recession that we're suffering in this country, we go straight back into current account deficit, and we actually get poorer again, Mr Bennett, not richer. And that shows up in the net investment position the net investment position which is projected in this budget 
This is the statistic that Mr English has said is indicative of New Zealand's greatest problem, and I think Sir Roger Douglas would agree. The net investment position in New Zealand, the net balance of New Zealand's assets in the world, what we own in the world, less what we owe to the world, is the net investment position, and for New Zealand it's negative. At the moment, it's negative 76% of GDP, negative 76% of GDP, and it goes to negative 86% of GDP or thereabouts, negative 80-something percent. I've got, I forgot, I'll check the number and then put it in my hand so accurately. The, the, the New Zealand's net international investment position goes backwards because despite the changes to this bill, brought about by the need to have reliance on Australian banks, because we don't save enough in our own country to own enough of our own financial institutions, we have a problem. And the point that I am making to the national members who plainly don't get it for themselves is that those problems get worse under this budget, as in the projections under this budget, New Zealand's net investment position gets worse from every year after this current year, year on year to the end of the projection period. New Zealand continues to get poorer every year as our net investment position gets worse as a percentage of GDP and in nominal terms. So, Mr Speaker, if those projections are right, and they're the best projections of the Government and the Treasury, by the end of that six-year period, if the Government is re-elected, if they get their way and they sell off all the SOEs or half of the SOEs that they've got on the block at the moment, and they are on the Treasury benches for a further three years, by the end of that three-year period, a total of six years after they would have been first elected, this is assuming they're re-elected for a second term, which of course we are fighting against and don't accept will be the case, but under their economic prescription, if continuing for another three years, New Zealand's net international position gets worse year on year on year. They've been quiet now. They're quiet now because that's the reality of the budget. It shows that the underlying structural problems of the New Zealand economy is not fixed. And that's why on this side of the House we've said that it's a, it's the, the issue is not mining and national parks. The issue is New Zealand's spending compared with how much we save. And it's mainly in the private sector. There is a government deficit which is significant at the moment, made worse by some of the government's policies. Uh, but the, under, the, the greater problem in New Zealand is our private indebtedness. We are still dissaving as a nation, and the government's own projections in this budget show that the end of six years in government, if they were to be re-elected for another three-year term, New Zealand's net international position gets worse year by year by year. So we'll still be reliant, uh, indeed more reliant, on Westpac Bank and on the other um, uh, major Australian banks, uh, because New Zealanders won't be saving enough, and of course the government's own policies in that regard, to destabilise and undermine KiwiSaver will be one of the reasons why that continues to get worse. The bigger problem, of course, is that uh, their Minister of Economic Development, who at Select Committee last week said agriculture is the only game in town, uh, pay due regard to the importance of agriculture, and I have no problem with that, but don't see the importance of exports in other sectors that we need to grow if we are to increase our earnings in the world, turn around our current account deficit and start getting wealthier as a nation rather than poorer, as is projected by the government's own budget. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Dr Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr.